story this morning um, I thought was pretty interesting. Uh, we know that for moms of kids on the spectrum and special needs kids that um, it can be very stressful. And a recent study showed that 50% of moms of children with autism have an elevated level of depression. This and I don't story, want to leave. This is no surprise to me as one of your favorite expressions. That's the duh heard, heard around the world. Um, yeah. yeah, I think that this is no surprise to the parents out there, our audience that's probably listening, that if you have a dad who is involved in your child's, in the raising of your child, um, it can make all the difference in the world for your own level of mental health. Yeah. Um, and and so what I loved about this, because, you know, sometimes we see these studies and it's like, duh. And it's like, well, how is this useful to me? I think it normalizes it for us. But I, but I love this, that they also found in this study that if dads regularly read to their kids that the moms ha reported fewer symptoms of depression. And isn't that just a simple thing that dads out there can do? You wouldn't think something like reading to your child could make such a difference, but this study proves. And we just had Anna write in, yes, father has become more aware of my son's needs now that he works from home, more sympathetic to me. And maybe, Shannon, that's a byproduct of this pandemic is that more fathers have really gotten to see what moms have to deal with at home. Uh, by yeah. being, you know, working from home, it's given them an awareness of the support that's needed. I think so. I also don't want to leave out because I know that there are many dads out there that are like, whoa, hold up a second, because we have many dads who are the main caregiver or yes. and, and we have many dads who are also stressed. And I don't want to leave out and, and make it sound like it's all cut and dried and it's the moms who are sad and depressed and the dads who are away in the office, that is not every case, but we will say that it is more often the case that um, that dads have been away working. I know in our case, it was certainly um, that textbook sort of thing where I said, "Okay, I got to put on a cape and become Wonder Woman, uh, you know, warrior mom," and and my husband said, "I got to put on the cape and I got to go outside the house and make more money." because uh -huh. somebody has to fund this project. And it, it was sort of like, you know, we started our marriage and it was all very, we're, we're a team. And and like, you know, the poo hits the fan. And we said later on, we laughed at ourselves and it was like we instinctively dialed back to 1952 standards. And even though we were both working outside the home, I was like, I have to become the happy homemaker. And my husband felt this real pressure to provide. Um, and it wasn't necessarily the roles that we wanted to be cast in, but we did sort of dial back to, I don't know, something primordial. Um, but I, 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 I do want to make sure that we say that it is stressful for all of the caregivers and that this study looked at ways that they could reduce the stress. And for moms, if dads read to their kids regularly, it was significant. So I think that's good news. Uh, they also said that joining uh, a group where you can talk to other people, getting counseling, um, and definitely getting respite. And we're okay. finding that most, most states have some sort of respite program where they will help you to pay for um, a babysitter of sorts. In some states, you can you have a choice. Like in California, they can you just call a service and they send somebody. Uh, or you can hire somebody and train them yourselves, and then they put in a time card. Uh, but respite's important. Yes, and I, even I, don't wonder... what, I don't know what I do without my respite uh, caregivers. I have a couple that works with me with Wyatt. And, um, you know, I don't, I'm a single mom. My husband passed away five years ago, and I could feel that void immediately, Shannon. You know, oh. it, yeah. It was definitely, I mean, the support level went down and my stress level went up. Well, and Nancy, you know, I think we don't talk enough about some of the additional stressors that families have because there are a lot of single parents out there, a lot of them who are struggling and this pandemic has made it worse for them because some of them have not had uh, contact with other adults 
And, and it's so important that you find an online group to be able to talk to other people. Um, all, when I think about in the time that I have known you, Nancy, when I first met you, you were a very happily married woman and your husband was an awesome dad and he was very involved in Wyatt's life. Yes, and I was. can remember, I was a little like mystified sometimes because you, you know, you would say things to me like, well, I'm, I'm going on a retreat this weekend um, so that I can go be with the monks and I'm going to meditate. And I would be like, who are you? And, <laughs> and I was like, how, how are you doing that? And you were able to say to me, well, it reads, you know, and we've got some help and support, but you know, Reed knows how important it is for me to be able to go and do that. And then of course, you know, your husband who had battled cancer before went through several different bouts where he was battling cancer again. And you not only had your job and Wyatt to take care of, you had the loss of your spouse helping to take care of Wyatt. And then you were having to take care of Reed. Right. And then you were having to take care of all the financial fallout of when a spouse is terminally ill. Nancy, I mean, you know, you're a rock star and, you know, you handled it all with grace. And, you, and I, can't, I can't even imagine for other people having to go through that. And ultimately, you know, Reed, who, you know, I remember in the last days, Reed said to me, he said, I don't want to leave her alone with this. Right. I was, it was like the one thing that he didn't want to do. He felt right. so bad about it, but he didn't get to choose. No. And, and you didn't get to choose. Right. And, and, you know, though, like, I just have to tell you how much I love you and respect you and how in awe I am of you. Cause I don't know if I could have done what you did. Thank I you. really don't. I really appreciate that. When you do what you have to do, you step up. And I know there are a lot of parents that watch our show that can relate to that. Um, parents that you know, as you say, are single parents raising their children. And you've got to learn to call on your support systems. If you don't have, if it's not a double parent household, you learn to get other support. And thank God, as I said, that we have respite. Uh, and I have that support, John and Andrea, who work with Wyatt. I don't know what I do without them. Um, it's just, it. you do what you have to do. Yep. Yep. But I do want to say that I think that this study has reminded us of something really important. And, you know, for those of you who are in a relationship with your significant other, um, you know, I would take this study back to them and say, hey, can I ask you a favor? This study has shown that the, you know, that moms have fewer symptoms of depression if dads will just read regularly. Is that something that you could commit to is to read to our child, you know, for 15, 20 minutes every night right? Um, and, and see if they'll do it. And, you know, I know that there's a possibility that they will say, no, I'm just not comfortable. But let's say this, let's say that that isn't even the end of the conversation, that if they say, no, I'm just not comfortable doing that, that then ask someone to help teach your spouse how to re read to your child, because that's something that they shouldn't miss out on. And it's a great way to start. For those of you who don't have a significant significant other living with you, and Nancy, we've had this conversation before too. You know how people always say to you, "Well, if there's ever anything I can do, right, right," and, and you're like, kind of, "Yeah," you think that they don't mean it, but they generally do if they say that, right? Well, and sometimes I think they it's just something it's lip service, right? But this is where the rubber meets the road, right? To go when the next time somebody says that to you, if there's ever anything I can do for you, I want you to take them up on it and say, you know what? Um, whenever you can, can you come and read to my child? I will still be here, but I would like it if you would come and read to my child. There's been a study that shows that uh, when children are read to regularly, that it reduces the stress of the mom. Like, let's just throw that out there. And maybe your sister-in-law will come over and read to your child for 15 minutes. And let's think about all the things that that might solve. It'll give you 15 minutes to breathe. You can be in the room meditating, right? Uh -huh. If you need to, to be there to support. But it also, it's because a lot of times, we look, we've all had the thing where our siblings 
don't know how to be with our child, right? right. Or other family members who just don't know how to connect with our, our children. We're not asking them to connect, just read to them. But here's what will happen if they read to them, maybe they'll start to connect with them. Yes. And maybe they won't feel the pressure of, oh, I need to know what, how to, everybody was like, I don't know how to be with a child with autism. And it makes me want to wring their necks because I'm like, how do you be with any child? Do that. Right. That's you know? something, you know, this is something that had never occurred to me. My brother always says, how can I help? Yet he doesn't know how to help. He, and, and it's not necessarily a good thing for him to have Wyatt alone. And reading to Wyatt could be a great way for him to bond with him. Yep, it absolutely could. So let's put that out there. Thanks for watching Autism Live. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now. here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.